Hello and welcome to the studio. I'm filming in the studio today instead of at home because, well, I don't need a reason, but my main reason is that my actual house is currently covered in laundry and the construction noises outside are getting worse. I think they're going to be finished with the project soon and maybe it'll be quiet there again, but for now, we're filming in the studio. So welcome to my studio. I have another sewing video for you today, another sewing project. I am, I'm quite proud of this one. I think I'm, I can actually feel myself getting better at sewing and getting more excited about doing more and more elaborate stuff. So that's fun. Um, this one was a challenge because it really did have to be good because it was for a wedding. <laughs> um, so, you know, picture the scene. I recently found out I'm allergic to pretty much all of my clothes. I had to get rid of basically everything and start again in hand sewn clothes. I've gone over this in other videos, so if you want more detail on that, you've got to check out some other videos. So I have not many clothes and one of my frilliest friends is getting married. I had to make something frilly, right? Right? I had to. I was going to do it eventually anyway and Josephine was getting married so this was this one had to be special, it had to be important. And I'm just going to take a quick minute to plug Josephine's Twitch and stuff. She she streams over on Twitch, her name there is Cake Jumper. I'm not really a Twitch person and I never really got into live streaming but she's my friend, go check her out. I'm sure you'll love her. I So for this project, I had a few things I wanted to do specifically. Other than just it had to be wedding wedding worthy and that it had to be frilly because I'm not going to I'm not going to turn up to a frilly wedding not also in frills right um I also specifically wanted to use a vintage pattern because I have a couple of vintage patterns and I really wanted to use one of them and I wanted it to be quite sheer <laughs> because I used to go about in really see-through shirts all the time, you know? I went through quite a lot to be able to do that. And I miss it. And I think it suits me. So, <laughs> it had to be frilly. It had to be wedding worthy. It had to be vintage patterned. And it had to be, I, I had, my nipples had to be visible if I take my coat off. Those were my four criteria for this shirt. And I nailed it. I'm gonna skip to skip the drama. There's a lot more to this video, but frankly, I nailed it. <laughs> so, where to begin? Where to begin? Where to begin was picking a pattern. I have a whole bunch of patterns. A very a very kind person on Instagram gave me a bunch of old patterns, and I've also been looking on eBay and stuff for old vintage ones and I have this one that was printed in 1972, I think? I'm pretty sure it's 19, it was 72 or 73 or whatever and it seemed perfect because I could just do that but double the size of the frills, right? There's nothing stopping me doing that, that was the plan. The next step was to buy fabric. And fortunately for me, it turns out that cotton muslin is the cheapest fabric because people use it for practice, which is fair. And because it's cheap and easy to get, it's, um, wait, no, it's cheap, it's easy to get, and it's quite see-through because it's made to be, it's not made to be full garments, I suppose. So it's sheer, it's cheap. I got lots of it. I asked for three meters because I knew I wouldn't need that much for this shirt, but I asked for three meters because I want to use it to make this shirt and then possibly to make some other stuff on top of that. But then when they were rolling out the fabric in the shop, it had some marks on it. So they went past that and said they were going to give me another meter. And then the next bit had um, like a little hole in it. So they decided they were going to just scroll past that and give me another meter which was very kind of them, but because it doesn't really matter to me. Like I can just cut around that stuff, surely. Or, you know, I'll wear clothes with holes in them, I don't mind. But in the end, I ended up with five meters of this fabric, even though I only asked for three, which was just wonderful. Fabric shop people are so nice sometimes. 
That also means that you're going to see a lot of clothes in the future made with this fabric because I have so much of it and I already have plans for the next thing. So yeah, I'll get five meters of very sheer fabric. I've got my vintage pattern. All I need to do now is turn it into a shirt, which is the hard part, obviously. Now I've mentioned in a couple of my previous videos about sewing that I have this one friend who's really good at sewing and has been teaching me a lot of stuff and also doesn't like to appear in videos so I always make it look like I'm sewing alone or that I'm working with ghosts but um, <laughs> her sewing machine is way better than mine and mine is... Mine was good enough for what I wanted it for. When I first got my sewing machine I specifically wanted a cheap, easy to use one that I could practice on. And at the time, I didn't anticipate having to make all of my own clothes. You know, I got this machine back when I just thought I was gonna be making small things or maybe learning to make elaborate things, but doing it over time. And then obviously at the end of last year, I discovered I was gonna to have to learn to make all of my own clothes forever. So my sewing machine is gubbed. It's not completely gubbed, it's not unusable, but it's really struggling. <laughs> and this friend has a much better one. So I went to her house to do it. <laughs> um, me, me and my girlfriend just took her stuff over there and we spent an afternoon just hanging out, listening to music, eating snacks and sewing. And it was great, it was great. I'm gonna do it a lot more probably because it's <laughs> a really nice environment and her sewing machine is so good. It's so good. I literally did about, I did all of every single part of this. I, I stitched first with a straight stitch and then went over it with a zigzag. She taught me to do that because it holds it together better, which makes sense. And it really needs strongly held together, I guess, if it's such a flimsy fabric. Made sense to me. Anyway. I did all of that, not just not just going over each seam once, going over each seam twice. And her sewing machine didn't gum up or snap threads or throw a berkey at me even once. Not even once, not even once. My sewing machine could never, could never do that. My sewing machine can do maybe two and a half lines of stitching before it gums up. And then it could maybe do another one and obviously after you fix it again it'll maybe do another half before it snaps the thread and then it'll maybe do another line before literally just stopping for no reason my, my point is my point is I need to get a better sewing machine and in the meantime I'm probably going to sew at my friend's house as an added bonus that means you get to see her cat I will insert footage here of the cat. This is Chives, he's wonderful. He's a little old man and we love him. So, where had we got to? Where had we got to in this process? I did make notes. I made notes of what I was gonna talk about in this video and then I left them at home because obviously usually I film at home so I left them at home and I'm here in the studio with no notes. But my point is, I um, I was get I was just making what I wanted, and with the cotton thread, obviously it means the stitching isn't itchy, and I did double the size of the double the size of the frills, like I thought I was going to. Um, the friend who's good at sewing also told me that I could cut bits on if it's diagonal on the fabric, then I could just leave the edges raw and they would fray but not come apart completely, which sounded like a cool look, so I went with that. Um, the frills have unfinished, ragged hems on them, and I don't understand how that works. Not really. I don't understand why it being diagonal means that it won't fray entirely, but I trust her. I trusted her, and she was right, because she always is, and 
Um, every time I wash and wear this shirt, it gets a little more frayed and tattered looking, but it's still got its big massive frilly cuffs and its big massive frilly collar, which is great. <laughs> I kind of love it. I love that look now. It's great. Um, I used a more solid fabric for the actual, like the bit of the cuff that attaches the frill to the sleeve and the bit of the collar that attaches the frill to the shirt so that those bits have a little bit more structure. Um, it just felt more secure that way. It seems like it makes sense. It looks kind of cool. And also I think having the, the collar band and the cuff bands be solid white really emphasizes how sheer the rest of the shirt is, which I like, I enjoy that. <laughs> um, Buttons. Buttons is another thing. I have been avoiding putting buttons on clothes because my sewing machine doesn't have a button setting and I didn't really know how that worked. Um, it does have a setting that you can use to make buttonholes, but it is a huge pain in the deck to do, so I just don't do it. My friend's sewing machine not only has a buttonhole setting, there's a little thing that you just put the button in and it slides to the right size. It, it's so easy. It's so easy and I did it so quickly. <laughs> I need a better sewing machine team. I really, really do. Anyway, the shirt was completed. We did it in one afternoon. It was wonderful. It was ready to go. And then that week, I flew over to Ireland and I went to Josephine's wedding and it was beautiful it really really was it was such a good day um it was a long day for me because we flew over in the morning and then got there and to the wedding venue and everything by the afternoon and i was you know when you go beyond tired back into being energetic yeah i kind of got that way and i knew i would and it was so good it was so good and there was loads of people there that i hadn't met in person before and there was a lot of people there that I have I have met in person before but don't get to see regularly or haven't seen in years. And obviously Josephine got married. Josephine and Magdara got married. I'm not sure how he feels about being mentioned, but here we go. I have been, I had been given permission to like name and shame and show some pictures. So I will. I can and I will, and I'll show you pictures that I'm in also because I'm wearing my fabulous shirt. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe that was that was what a week ago. By the time you guys are seeing this, it'll be a couple of weeks. But for me right now, recording it, it was about a week ago. And I am full of ideas, full of ideas for more stuff to make, because um, now that I know I can, it's it's pinging in my brain all the time. It's great. It's great. It's just another. It's literally just another art form that I've gotten into. Making clothes is an art. It is specifically, I think, a type of sculpture, which I was never good at, but art's art, isn't it? <sighs> Let me know what you think of the new setup filming in the studio. Let me know what you think of the shirt I made. If you have any fun ideas for things I could make in future, leave me a little thing. Let me know, let me know. That would be cool, that would be cool. As always, patrons will get to see this first, and as always, patrons get everything first, and extras. But as always, you don't have to support me if you don't want to. I would appreciate it if you did. If you want more stuff that I'm doing and you want everything early, you only have, like, you can pledge just like one dollar a month and that's fine. There's obviously more stuff for higher tiers, but you don't have to. You can if you want to. I would appreciate and love you if you did. I've forgotten what else I have to say. I think I'm done. Cheers, here we go. Keep keep your eyes peeled for more. I've also been making more jewellery. I've been making jewellery again. I've been making clothes. I've been painting again. There's all sorts going on. Okay, love you all. Take care. <laughs>